Hi, Dean. Hey, Chelsea. How are you? You need to put your uh, thing in. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Obviously. You know how this is done. Hi, honey. How, how are, are you? That's, this is so nice of you to do. I know you're in Bel Air, but now you're you're about to enter hell. You're doing a podcast for a friend and nothing's worse. Well, than that. I would do anything for you. <laughs> it's very nice of you to say. Dean, to show everybody who's listening, Dean uh, was a writer on both of my TV shows for E! and for Netflix. And so he also is big and bald and <laughs> reminds me very much of Wait, my bald brother, Roy. This is not so, a roast of me. This is a roast of Woody Allen. Oh, no, no. It's always going to be a roast of you, <laughs> Dean. And then we can focus on Woody Allen, the real perpetrator. All right. So just to fill you in, we just finished roasting Woody Allen. And I figured what better way to sort of cap off this whole thing than to talk with someone who had a real life Woody Allen encounter in the wild, in his natural habitat, which is New York <laughs> in City. The, in the wild. It was yeah. in the wild. It felt like I was in the wild, actually. Um, okay, so it was like, I see, you know I have no sense of time. So it could have been 15 years ago. It could have been 12. It could have been 18. I don't know. I was basically invited by Katie Couric. She said, let's go to this dinner party tonight. It was at Jeffrey Epstein's house. Okay, oh. so this oh. was before I knew, obviously, who Jeffrey Epstein was. I found out, you know, probably the day after I went, because I was like, who's that fucking asshole whose house I was at? <laughs> anyway, I get there. It's Katie Couric and I are like the probably the first. And oh, no, Charlie Rose was there. He was oh, the first boy. person. Okay, and then it was Katie Couric, Charlie Rose, Prince Andrew. Another, oh, wow. another suspicious character. He showed up, and then in walked Woody Allen and Sunyi, and I was like, "What? Whoa!" And it was, oh, who was it? This publicist woman from New York, Peggy, someone had invited us all. All right, that's how Katie got invited. Okay. That's how everybody. So, and so there's six of us, and I'm just like, "What?" Uh, you are, know, this are you is seated a, at the same table, or you're just milling well, about at that point? First, we were just milling about. We were just like hanging out, you know, like in this little drink area room where we were having cocktails, right? And then we went into dinner, and I was expecting, oh, like if these six randos are here, like it's gonna get, you know, there's gonna be twenty at least more, but there weren't. It was just the six of us. Yeah. So we sat down to dinner, and I just was thinking. I was sitting there looking at Woody Allen, you know, thinking like I am not going to be the girl that sits at a dinner with Woody Allen and does not bring up the fact that he is dating and married to his daughter. So <laughs> I waited. I waited. I assessed the situation. We had a full dinner where I pretended to be friendly. We talked about stand up. We talked about some of his movies that I used to respect. <laughs> and then I waited until he had a full piece of pie in his mouth. And I was sitting directly across from him, from him and Soon Yi. And when there was, you know, a moment of silence, I interjected and said, so how did you two meet? <laughs> As you would ask a couple when you first meet them, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I wanted to get down to business. <laughs> That's amazing. And I heard you say, and I heard you tell this story once before, and you said, you know, I think you guys quickly left, and you said, I'm used to a dinner party ending on that tone, so I was ready to rumble. You kind oh, of yeah, like, Katie Couric. Yeah. Looking, first of all, Woody Allen's pie flew out of his mouth, because he was laughing, because it was, it was funny. Yeah. Uh, Soon Yi wasn't really, I don't think she was clued into what I said, or she was doing something else. But Katie Couric looked at me after I said that, and she said, okay, Chelsea, time to go. <laughs> And did you, did he have any idea who you were? Did, like, was he a fan? Yeah, yeah, he knew who I was. He was asking me about stand up, you know, why I didn't do movies. Like, he was interested and seemingly interested um, yeah. in what, uh, so it, it, we were having a nice conversation, but the whole time I was just like, how am I going to get him? Because I cannot go home and sleep tonight if I sat at a dinner table with, with Woody Allen and didn't say anything. And little did I know I was seated, seated, seated with Jeffrey Epstein, who I should have also been focused on humiliating. <laughs> yeah, you've got Epstein, you've got Charlie Rose, who had some issues, you've got Woody Allen. And then I remember you have a crazy story in Las Vegas with Bill Cosby that Chris Frangiola has told before. Like, oh, yeah, I, you know, yeah, I, yeah. You are, you some sort of creep, are you a creep magnet at this point? Like, what's I, going I, on? <laughs> but I, I skirt around them. Yeah, Bill Cosby invited me to his room once. And thank goodness I brought everybody with me because this was before we found out what he did to women. And I was performing at the Borgata Casino in Atlantic City, and he was performing there as well, uh, I believe in a smaller room. And he called me up to, he asked for me to come up to his hotel room, and I brought everyone with me. Thank God. He was so pissed when he saw that I was like five guys deep. He was like, oh, how am I going to roofie this girl? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, going back to the dinner party, do you like look back on that night now and think like, 
well, I, you know, I just narrowly escaped joining some sort of weird Hollywood sex cult. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think I've ever narrowly been close to uh, joining any cult because I'm not a, a follower, Dean. I'm a leader. Yeah, that's I, right. I don't, but no, I look back at that as, you know, uh, I'm just really glad I said something. It's how I feel about life. Say something, you know, yeah. don't sit there and just be nice to somebody because they're rich or they're famous or, or because you don't want any conflict. Say something. Always stand up yeah. for women. That's great. And I remember when we did your Netflix show, you left one weekend to fly back to New York and Ronan Farrow, I think, interviewed you at the 92nd Street Y. And, uh, he was so instrumental in sort of bringing all these allegations about Woody Allen to light. I'm wondering what you thought of the HBO docuseries, if you saw that, Alan. Oh, yeah, Farrow. I saw it. It was heartbreaking. I mean, yeah. that poor girl, you know, that poor family. Uh, it's just like, and poor Mia Farrow for being, you know, lied to in that way and treated in that way. And and it's just, you know, it's just so sickening. It's so sickening the way that we reward powerful men when they have given us reason to pause. You know, yeah. somebody's talent doesn't supersede their morals. Well, okay. I think that just about covers everything I wanted to ask you. That's such an amazing story. And uh, there you have it. You did something we failed to do on this show, which is roast Woody Allen to his face. So, and you live to tell about it. So thank you so much for being here and sharing that story. I really appreciate it, Chelsea. All right, Dean. Thank you so much. Take care. All right, take care. <laughs>